Hello students, this is Learn Easy Tutorial, your online learning companion. In this video, we will see the conditions required for a chemical reaction to take place and some of the factors that affect the rate of reaction. Take some lead nitrate in a test tube and heat it. The white solid changes to a pale yellow solid with reddish brown fumes coming out of the test tube. Here, Lead nitrate absorbed heat and decomposed to form lead oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen. This type of reaction is also known as thermal decomposition. Photosynthesis is a classic example of chemical change that happens by the absorption of light. The light energy activates chlorophyll which is utilized to split water to form hydrogen and oxygen ions. The hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide combine to form glucose and oxygen ions combine to form oxygen molecules. So leaves can prepare glucose only in the presence of light. This reaction is also known as photochemical reaction. To split water to get its components, we have to supply electricity. Take some acidified water and pass electricity through it. It splits to form hydrogen and oxygen. This type of reaction is known as electrochemical reaction. It is widely used in metallurgy to extract an element from its compound. Some reactions require an increase in pressure to trigger them. For example, nitrogen combines with hydrogen in gaseous form to form ammonia. This reaction requires both high temperature as well as high pressure. Under pressure, the molecules come closer to each other, which favors the forward reaction, forming ammonia. In the reaction explained, Catalyst ion is also present. Catalysts are chemical substances that help in increasing or decreasing the rate of reaction. The presence of finely divided ion increases the rate of reaction but doesn't take part in the reaction. When you expose sodium to air, it immediately causes an explosive reaction. Here, direct contact of reactants triggered the reaction. This is why we store sodium and potassium under kerosene because of their high affinity with oxygen and water. When we add zinc to dilute hydrochloric acid, zinc chloride and hydrogen are formed. But if you add zinc powder instead of zinc granule, the speed of the reaction increases. This can be observed with hydrogen gas formed at a faster rate. When zinc is powdered, the surface area that is in contact with the other reactant increases. This helps in speeding up the reaction. Reactivity of the reactants is a major factor determining the rate of reaction. It also determines whether the reaction will occur or not. For example, exposing sodium to air causes an explosive reaction. But at the same time, if we expose gold to air, no reaction occurs even though both are metals. When we add zinc to dilute sulfuric acid, zinc sulfate and hydrogen is formed. When we add zinc to concentrated sulfuric acid, zinc sulfate, water and sulfur dioxide are formed. That is, when the concentration of the reactants changes, it can form various products or change the rate of reaction. In cellular respiration, if the air is present, carbon dioxide and water are formed along with the release of energy. But in limited supply of air, lactic acid and energy are formed. And in absence of air, Alcohol, carbon dioxide and energy are formed. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video useful, please do like, share and subscribe. See you soon with a new video. Till then, bye-bye and happy learning.